We spent six weeks in Peru and loved every minute of it. In this video, we're gonna show you our top 10 activities. Most people only use Lima, Peru as a stepping stone to get you to Machu Picchu, the Sacred Valley, and other tourist attractions. But today, we're gonna show you why Lima, Peru should be on your bucket list. Lima is a very large city, around 10 million people, but it doesn't feel that way. Each neighborhood has its own quaint vibe that gives you a family and community feel. One of our first impressions of Lima is the weather is perfect. Every day it's about 70 to 75 degrees. It's sunny, it's not too hot, not too cold, just right for some running, sweats, t-shirt, and sunglasses. popular neighborhood in all of Lima called Miraflores. It is gorgeous. It sits right atop of these cliffs right over the ocean. Here is where you're gonna find all of like high-end shopping, huge sky rises. It's home to beautiful parks and a really nice like Malacan walking trail. If you want to learn more about Lima, we highly recommend you watch the video in the link above. trip to Peru, we highly recommend you spend some extra time in the Sacred Valley. We spent about 10 days exploring the Sacred Valley in Peru and it was probably our favorite time in all of Peru. There are ruins everywhere, gorgeous mountain views, and the most hospitable people we have ever met. The most popular town in this valley is going to be called Oyente Tambu. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Located along the Patacancha River, nestled back in the hills, the views are unmatched. The town center is charming, full of culture, and has a surplus of bars, restaurants, and cafes. Wandering through this town will take you back in time in all the best ways. If you're short on time, we highly recommend at least spending a day or a night here. And it's easy to do because the starting trek to Machu Picchu is here, including the location for the train station to Aguas Caliente. The best things to do here are explore the ruins, wander the peaceful alleyways, souvenir shop, and enjoy the incredible views. They say the Oyente Tambu ruins make the shape of a llama. You tell me, do you see a llama there? We highly recommend if you're spending some time in the Sacred Valley to give yourself maybe a day or two and check out Oyente Tambo. Oye, Oye, Oyete, Oyete Tambu? I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyways, it has some impressive ruins, gorgeous views of the Sacred Valleys, some really good hikes here, and even if you're not interested in any of that, just wandering around the town is beautiful. Small little alleyways where you can see that they built the walls, the ancient Incas did, of the way the mortar was built and how the rocks fit together. The plaza here is awesome. People are so friendly and everyone's out and about and exploring the little mountain village. It's worth spending a day, maybe two if you can afford it. It's definitely worth it. We love making these videos for you guys and we want to keep making them for you. So if you could help us out by subscribing, we would greatly appreciate that. Next up is Machu Picchu. And yes, it deserves all the hype. We started our morning by waking up at 4 a.m. followed by waiting in line for 40 minutes and then finally, we made it to our second world wonder. I am so 
happy right now. Definitely worth waking up at 4.30 in the morning for this. So just know if you come here and it's covered in clouds and you can't see anything, honestly give it like 10 minutes and you will be rewarded with the most beautiful view and the best lighting. It's incredible. And also highly recommend get away from that top viewpoint, come down a little bit and you have the place yourself. I think there's only been like 10 people walk past Pat and I and we're just sitting here for the most part by ourselves enjoying this. Doesn't get much better than this. Now that you've just checked Machu Picchu off your bucket list, what next? Stay the night in the town Aguas Caliente at the base of Machu Picchu. We were pleasantly surprised by this little town. Yes, it is focused 100% on tourism, and at times it can be a lot. But there are so many alleyways that lead to cute little bars, cute cafes, souvenir shops, and every other door is a restaurant. And that's not exaggerating. But be prepared for a lot of stairs and hills. The town is encompassed by towering mountain peaks and a glistening river running right through it, unlike any scenery we've ever seen before. Another great thing to do while in the Sacred Valley is go to the Mara's Salt Flats. These 5,000 salt flats were created by the Incas in the 1400s. Each pond belongs to a local family, and you can actually see them out there working on their little piece of land daily. The salt water comes from a natural spring, which then flows through a labyrinth of canals that reaches each pond. When you get done looking at the salt ponds, then you can go and even buy some local salt. They've got delicious salted chocolate and some amazing salt for cooking. If you find this video to be helpful, please hit that like button and comment your favorite part of the video. All right, now time for our favorite activity of the whole trip in Peru, hanging with llamas. Us and our friends, the llamas. <laughs> right here, bud, I got you. <laughs> That's the funniest close-up is him chewing. Look at that. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> we loved seeing all of the llamas in Peru. They are everywhere. But we did hate to see how some tourists and even some locals did treat some of them. Some of them are put into horrendous costumes and made to pose for people. And then the tourists are like yanking on their necks trying to get this perfect picture with the llamas. Please don't be these people. Please do not encourage this. The only way to stop abusing animals like this is for the demand to go away. And we hold that power. <laughs> Animals are not meant to be exploited for our personal entertainment. They're meant to be observed and cherished. So please remember this whenever you're traveling anywhere. If you see animals that look like they're being treated cruelly, please do not engage. Oh goodness, you are really close, sir. Mean 
Nestled in the Peruvian Andes at an elevation of 11,000 feet sits Cusco, which was once the capital of the Inca Empire. When the Spaniards arrived, they were astonished by the beauty of its buildings, the regularity and length of its streets, and its magnificent temples. The delicacy of the stonework excelled that of the Spaniards. So, as the Spaniards did, they destroyed most of it. Fortunately, there is still some of it left. You can see some of the ancient buildings, ruins, and streets while wandering through Cusco. We recommend you staying in Cusco for about three or four days. One, because it's just gorgeous and there's a lot to do. But two, because you need a lot of time to acclimate to the elevation, and that's no joke. The food in Peru is absolutely amazing. I miss ceviche, chicharron sandwiches, calza, and just pretty much anything they put in front of me. I could go back to Peru just for the food. Here are our top favorite ones. Chafa, ceviche, pan de chicharron, pisco sour, causa, anticuchos, picarones. Next up is the jaw-dropping Rainbow Mountain Palcoyo. The mornings started with getting up at 4.30 a.m. Took a two and a half hour drive to have breakfast. I ate some chicken noodle soup for breakfast, not even joking. And then another hour and a half on the bumpiest road I've ever been on in my life, in the back seat of a Ford Explorer. And now we are here. It is kind of chilly out, probably about 45 to 50 degrees. And now we're about to go hike a mountain. So there's multiple different viewpoints when you get here to po Palcoyo or Pocayo. It's kind of the second Rainbow Mountain. It's, most, it's not the most popular one, but the most popular one is out of service right now. What I heard was that the locals are trying to take the land back. So this is our next best option. Still pretty incredible. So there's one first lookout and you can just stop there and not have to do much hiking since then. Or you can keep walking on all these trails and see some incredible viewpoints and get up to these high mountain peaks back here behind me. It's quite impressive. And this is the reason why the tour started at 4.30 in the morning because there's already a ton of people here. So definitely worth trying to be one of the first ones here because it just takes away from it when you're surrounded by a hundred tourists, even though you are a tourist. So this lady is just here yelling at her llamas from like way up high on the hill and they listen to her. She has so many different like little words and nicks that she uses and every single one they listened to her, it was oh, so cool. I could do that in a heartbeat. So it's crazy to me that all of these mountains you see are here, everywhere around us. They've got different striations of different colors. I don't know how many years ago, but this is all due to global warming and to all the snow and ice melting off of it and all the minerals interact with the glaciers and the snow and it created these different colors in the mountain. So while I'm sitting here and enjoying it and it's gorgeous, it kind of makes me sad because I know it's caused by global warming. So.
So my hair is destroyed from the wind up here. But we are up at the very top. I believe they call this the priest area, which I can totally understand why, because it's just these jagged rocks. And just like so many of them all around us up here. And then when you look down, you just look across all of the rainbow hillsides and the bright, vibrant colored hillsides. And then you look the other direction and it's just glaciers and glaciers. done looking at all the rainbow okay. mountain and then looking at the priest's rock thing area it, there's a trail that takes you down so basically it makes one big giant loop if at any point you don't want to keep going you can turn back i highly recommend you go do it all though because the views are incredible and the views keep getting better and better and then it just kind of gets to the point where you're like okay i've seen all of this i don't need to keep seeing it again so pat and i kind of left our tour guides and we're trekking on down Okay. Yes, say coco? Coca. Oh, coca. Coca. Oh, okay. So she speaks the native Ketwa language, and these are all of her llamas. And I really just like all the llamas here because they're put in costumes and they're made to work. And these ones over here are just like free roaming. It's awesome. Did you know Peru has an adrenaline filled desert oasis? We thought it was going to be a peaceful weekend at this mirage like oasis, but boy were we wrong. Check out Huacachina. All right, we are strapped in and we're ready to go. After you've had your fill of adrenaline, hike up one of the biggest sand dunes and enjoy the sunset. But wow, are these views worth it? 